Hi everybody, what's up and welcome back to my channel. As you guys can see, the setup of today's video is a little bit different than what I do with normal videos. Today I'm going to be talking with you guys a little bit about relationships, whether they're friendships, romantic relationships, parent relationships, whatever it may be. I've done a couple different of these Let's Talk videos before in the past, so if you guys are interested in watching those and hearing what I have to say on the situations that we discussed in those videos, I will link them down in the description box below. I'm going to start a fun little series, a little Let's Talk series, where I have you guys send in questions, advice, scenarios, whatever, whatnot, and maybe once a month or every couple of weeks we're gonna sit down in a situation like such kind of like a podcast situation but like you guys can see me so like not a podcast situation does that make sense anyways and i'm gonna try and do my best to give you guys some advice please do know that i am not a professional um obviously you are welcome to take my advice if you are if you want to if you don't want to that is perfectly fine it is all up to you i'm just dishing out the advice that maybe I would like to hear or just my personal opinions on a situation that I've been through. So that's where my advice is coming from. Before we get into today's video, I do want to thank today's sponsor of the video, BetterHelp. You guys know mental health is something that is so, so incredibly important to me, whether it's talking about depression, anxiety, PTSD, anything along the sorts, anything to do with mental health, it is so extremely important to me, which is why I am so excited to be working with BetterHelp on today's video. BetterHelp is an online therapy service that offers licensed therapists to listen to and to help you. BetterHelp makes it super, super easy to connect with your therapist online in private conversations, and it also makes going to therapy a little easier, especially if, you know, nowadays with the whole pandemic and everything going on, a lot of therapists aren't taking on new patients, so having something like this with BetterHelp is amazing. You can do it from online, from home, so you don't even have to leave your house. On top of that, BetterHelp has a broad range of 20 thousand experts to give you access to help that may not be in your area. They also make it incredibly easy to set up. You basically just take this questionnaire that helps narrow down the specific help that you will need from a therapist and in under 48 hours you'll get matched with a therapist that is best for you based on your questionnaire. And say that therapist doesn't work out, you can request to change a therapist at any time with no additional cost. Join the 2 million plus people who have taken charge of their mental health with BetterHelp. And if you guys are interested in signing up with BetterHelp, they gave me a 10% off discount code for you guys to use for your first month. Just go to betterhelp.com slash Melissa Dimmer. And once again, thank you to BetterHelp for sponsoring today's video. Let's get on into today's video. We are going to be answering some questions regarding relationships, like I said, romantic relationship, friendships, parents, whatever the sort may be for these questions. I asked you guys to send in a bunch of questions to my Google forum, so I have it right here. And we're gonna get started and we're gonna answer some of these. This video is probably gonna be a long one, so get a snack, get a drink. I've got my emotional support protein powder drink, smoothie, something, whatever it is. Okay, question number one. What have you learned from your relationships collectively? And what have you learned from each one? Ariana style, one taught me love, one taught me patience, etc. Okay, first of all, I love the whole setup of like the one taught me love, one taught me patience type thing. This is a little difficult because I feel like I've only had maybe two serious relationships in my life. I'm still young. I'm 20. Um, my longest relationship was three years and that was from be the end of high school to beginning slash middle of college. So I would say my first serious relationship um, taught me patience, communication um, is very, very important. It's pretty much the basis of everything like if you guys are having a disagreement communicating is literally the number one thing because i mean if if you're arguing in the first place about something there has to be something going on with the communication in the first place so communication i would also say the right and wrong ways to be loved i've learned from relationship okay we're gonna go on to the next question now Ooh, this is a juicy one. Okay. How do you deal with a friend who constantly puts you down to make herself feel better even if she doesn't notice? I love her and want to continue being friends, but I feel like I've now learned the behavior and I have started to constantly put myself down because of it and because I'm worried of, about how her and her family view me. Thoughts. First and foremost, if you have a friend 
who is constantly putting you down to make them feel better, I feel like the first thing that you need to do, first and foremost, absolute, and I feel like a lot of people could back me up on this one, is to distance yourself from this person. I know that you said that she probably doesn't even notice that she's doing this, um, but and that you love her, obviously. Like, you love your friend. You don't want to be mean to her or anything. And I can totally, completely get that. But if your friend is putting you in a position where what they're saying to you is putting you down, that is not a beneficial friendship relationship on either parts. Because like you said, um, your friend puts you down to bring her up. That's not healthy at all. And I can assure you, I don't even need a PhD to tell you that one. Um, that is not healthy at all. And a friendship should never be like that. You guys should never have to bring one down to bring the other up. That is not how a friendship works. That's not how a relationship works. You are supposed to be giving each other support. And if that is not what your friend is doing for you, then I really, really highly suggest taking a step back for yourself and for her. Um, maybe take some time apart, figure out who you guys are on your own. I know you're worried about how her and her family will view you, but in all honesty, at the end of the day, the only opinion that matters about yourself is the opinion that you have on yourself because you, at the end of the day, are the only person that you have to live with. You have to live inside your own head. And if you don't enjoy living inside your own head, that is a problem and it needs to be fixed. Okay, we're gonna move on to the next question. How do you know when it's a relationship, more specifically a friendship that's worth saving? I would say if you are having problems in a relationship and a friendship, we're just gonna call it a relationship at this point, whether it's between a friend or a significant other, I don't care who it is. Um, if you're having problems within a relationship and it's getting to the point where you are asking yourself if it's worth saving. I have had friends situations where we have had a rough go at things, we've fought a lot, we've had a lot of fights, we've had, you know, a lot of run-ins, which we've had rough, rough patches, rough times, and we have saved the friendship or, you know, worth saving. And I would say that this... <laughs> This mostly applies to my friendships that I have had since I was a younger kid. I guess I would say that whether a relationship is worth saving is if you are both willing to put in the work and the effort to consistently do better to communicate and fix whatever problems you guys are having, whether it be friendship, relationship, like I said, whatever the issues may be, if you guys are both committed to fixing those problems, I feel like at that point, the relationship is worth saving. But if one of you is in it more than the other, just walk away. It is honestly going to hurt you more if you continuously put yourself through something that is not a one-sided thing. Same thing with relationships, same thing with, you know, parent relationships, anything. Relationships are not one-sided. You have to put effort into it. I've been friends with this person for a long time and we have called every day and done everything together and I hope we would last because they made me so happy. Whenever I had a long day or anything, they were always there to comfort me, but they started ignoring me recently and I've done everything to reach out and to ask what was wrong and they haven't answered. So I feel very down because I don't know how to let go now. First, <laughs> firstly, I am so, so incredibly sorry that you are going through this. I've been there, I've done that, and then I've been totally ghosted and it sucks. It fucking sucks. The only thing that I can really tell you, and I know this is easier said than done, but listen to how people treat you. There was, hold on, there was a quote I literally wrote down today because it directly speaks to the situation and I feel like you need to hear it. Okay, so the quote is, when people show you who they are, believe them. If this person is now ignoring you and not putting any time into getting to know you, believe them. They they don't want to talk to you. And I'm not saying that in a they don't care about you, like, move on, like, mean way. I, I mean it in a way to protect you. Don't, don't waste any more tears. Don't waste any more thought process on them. If they're ignoring you, they don't want to talk to you. And it is not worth your time and your effort to be thinking over them constantly when they aren't even thinking of you. 
And to be quite honest, yes, they could be going through something and that might be why they stopped, They started to ignore you. But in all honesty, it does not take much to send a text message being like, Hey, I'm not really feeling my best right now. I don't really want to talk about it. I'm just going to let you know. I'm going to, you know, go MIA for a little bit. But yeah, I would, I would honestly say, as hard as it is, move on. Clearly... They are not worth any of your time and effort. If, and even if things didn't get rough for them, that is still so, so shitty of them to do. And I am so, so sorry that that happened to you. So basically, I was with this guy, but I ended the relationship because I didn't have feelings anymore, or that's what I thought. I know he still loves me, and he told me he does. The problem now is that I kind of ended things because of my mental health. And I don't know if getting back with him is a good idea. It wasn't a toxic relationship at all. It was great, honestly, but I don't know what to do. And to do about it. I don't know if I should get back with him because if I do, is my mental health gonna make me end everything? Knowing that he used to help me, he, knowing that he used to help me feel better. Love you, by the way. I would say if you are still concerned and you are still wishy washy on whether you wanna get back together with him or not, I would continue to stay single, first of all, continue to stay single and work through those issues but I feel like maybe having a conversation with this person and letting them know where your head is at letting them know like hey like I do like you if that is it I mean it sounds from this that you do like him um so I I would let him know be like hey I do like you but I'm a little afraid and I would voice what you are afraid of and if that is something that both of you guys can work through in a relationship, I say go for it. If it's something that you feel you need to focus and worry about on your own, stay single and work through it until you are ready to be in a relationship because I feel like getting into a relationship when you are mentally not all there and mentally not fully ready it does a lot more damage than good because you are now not in a way leading on someone because it does sound that you do love like you do like him but it's it's still putting this person in an unfair place where you know they're ready to commit but maybe you aren't just before you do obviously make things official with this guy if that is what you are going to do have a conversation with him. Let him know what is going on in your head. Maybe him knowing where you're at could help the situation a little more. Okay, so the next question is, how do you know if someone is right for you? I, okay, I feel like the one way to know, well, there's a couple ways, in my opinion. I feel like one of the ways to know that someone is good for you is when you hang out with them and you're around them, you feel yourself. Like, you are completely and fully yourself. You can be your goofy self, your normal self, you know. I feel like another reason to know someone is good for you or right for you is if they treat you right. And when I'm talking about treat you right, I'm not talking about the bare minimum, you know, like texting you, communicating with you, like calling you beautiful, stuff like that. Like I am talking, they go above and beyond and I'm not talking above and beyond that is like undoable like spending lots and lots of money on you someone who doesn't make you second guess or doubt someone who you trust and don't have to think twice about I feel like that is when you know someone is truly right for you I've only experienced that maybe one or two times before but just because someone you know is right for you doesn't mean they're the one that would be my answer just someone you feel completely and totally comfortable around someone you can trust with secrets someone you can trust with just i guess anything okay this next question is a long one okay so back in january i started talking to this guy in my choir class everything was going well i found out he was a senior and i was a freshman at the time oh boy i feel like i know where this is going and like I said, everything was going great. Then February comes and he tells me he's graduating early. There it is. But it doesn't but doesn't give me a specific date. Well, it turns out that the Monday after he told me wait, hold on. It turns out it was the Monday after he told me the Friday before. So he told her on a Friday and then the next Monday he was gone. In case anybody else didn't get that. That took me 
threw me through for a loop for a second, okay? And didn't give me any warning before the end of the day. I got him a bunch of things for Valentine's Day, but because I was a freshman and I didn't know better, I let him give me a hickey. That was all I got from him when my mom had taken me out to buy him candy and a bunch of other things. He couldn't even be bothered to get me even just a card. Well, like two weeks after he's gone from school, my mental health goes down the drain, which forced me to drop out of school. I'm going back in August, though. I'm glad you're going back in August. Fuck this boy. <laughs> and then he ghosts me. Last month, I finally got the chance to ask him why he did it. And he said it was because he'd already messed with my feelings enough and he felt extremely bad. Bull fucking shit. I forgave him and everything was good for another two weeks. Well, like two days ago, I found I find out that he started dating his best friend, who's a grade above me, and has the same name as me. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> After he told me he didn't want to date because he was leaving for college soon and didn't want to do a long distance relationship. That was the last straw. This morning, he was ignoring me, as he usually does, so I texted him going off on him and blocked his number and snap. I didn't even feel anything when I did it. It honestly felt like it was way past time, and I'm honestly glad that I did block him. Holy shit. Where do I even start on this? I am so sorry. Those senior boys are honestly trash. Like, I am sorry, but any... Anybody who is a senior and preys on a freshman romantically, there is something wrong with you. Because we all know it's not going to end nicely, and we all know what they're in for it. Like, can you leave the freshman alone, please? Thank you. Second, the fact that you went out of your way to treat him nicely, and he didn't even get you so much as a card. Like, I, the card is the bare minimum the bare minimum. Also, I just want to say I am so sorry that you had to drop out of school because of this asshat, but like I also feel that because I've been there. And obviously now you know the whole like, oh like I don't have feelings for you, like I don't want to date, I'm going long distance thing was bullshit because he literally went and got with his best friend. Like why couldn't you just be honest with me? This is what I don't get about people more specifically men because i've experienced this with men more and if anybody wants to argue with me in the comment section about this i'm talking about my experience so you can't discount my, my experience anyways i was talking with this about a friend the other day how men in particular that we have noticed with the experiences that we have experienced have the heart and maybe it's just the men that we're picking but they have the hardest time being upfront and honest about what they want. Even when they're breaking up with you, they're like, I'm sorry, like, I don't want to do long distance, like, it's too hard for me. But then you go around and you date your best friend, who's the grade above me, a sophomore, and you're still going out to college, which means you're still going to do long distance. If you just didn't want to date me, why didn't you say that in the first place? Like, honesty goes a long way. A long way. And I would much rather you let me down hard with honesty than let me down with lies. Because as soon as I figure out that you lied to me, I'm going to be ten times more pissed than when you broke up with me. Like, that is just common sense. And I don't know why that doesn't click in some people's heads when they're, like, breaking up with people or even, like, you know cutting someone off from their life. Okay, we're gonna move on to the next one. I have this friend that is very stuck up and egocentric, and I always wanted to end our friendship, but I don't know how to say it to her without hurting her, and I don't want to sound rude because she's probably gonna send me off and curse me or whatever thing she always does, and I'm pretty sensitive. How should I do it? To be quite honest, I feel like the best way to go about something like this is, you know, I would, I would just let her know. I'd be like, hey, this friendship is really not benefiting me and I don't want to continue being your friend. I wish you the best, like, you know, not mad at you, wish you no harm, wish them the best, stuff like that, but I would make it pretty clear you don't want to be friends with them anymore. And the thing is, is you can't control how they're going to react. You could possibly, you could go about this in the nicest way possible and 
they could still go off on you. And I'm not saying that to discourage you from stopping to being friends with this person, but it is a little, you know, PSA. No matter how you go about this, they still have a chance of obviously lashing out at you. The thing is, is you are not responsible for how they choose to react. If they do decide to lash out at you, even if you're being nice, I would just block them, to be quite honest. You don't need to deal with that. You don't want to be friends with them. It's not your responsibility anymore to, you know, deal with how they react to whatever you want to tell them. So, what is an immediate red flag when in a relationship? I would say an immediate red flag for me is how they treat people around them. Servers, waiters, um, their family, their friends, teachers, professors, you know, just ordinary everyday people. If they treat regular people like crap, honey, best believe he's not going to treat you any better or she or they. If you're not kind, like I'm sorry, that's a massive turn off. If you are not a kind, nice person, I don't want anything to do with you. Because Hi, so I'm in a relationship with my boyfriend and it's nothing spectacular or amazing, but I just want something more. I don't know what it is. I just feel like the drive and passion isn't there anymore. And don't get me wrong, he's a really sweet guy. I don't think it's going to work out for us. Oh, but I don't think it's going to work out for us. And I'm getting kind of bored in the relationship. What should I do? Um, I feel like there really is only one answer for this. And I would say break up. If you are not 100% in on this relationship, there is absolutely no use for you or this other person to be in this relationship. It is only going to harm you and this other person if you continue to be in a relationship you don't want to fully be in. So I would say break up with them. And I do understand that that is hard. Like you said, there's nothing wrong with this guy. He's super, super sweet. But sometimes two people just don't click. So my best friend has always been the louder friend than me. And I'm usually quieter when I'm around her. But when I'm by myself, I'm usually a bit more lively. The problem is my friend loves the limelight and has to have everybody's attention. One time in class, we were talking and I answered a question and it was a good answer, but before the teacher could say anything, my friend jumps in and says, I agree with that and I think that we should help out in the environment as well. We're in geography. Anyway, the teacher applauded her and said well done to her for her amazing answer and didn't give any recognition to me or my answer. I just feel like I'm in my friend's shadow and I don't know what to do. I would definitely bring this up to your friend. Um, it may not be something that she's aware that she does, uh, cause a lot of the time that is how it is. Um, so I would bring it up to her and be like, Hey, I don't know if you do, you know, that you do this, but I'm just letting you know, like it kind of makes me feel bad. I just want to let you know. Um, I'm, and I, I would make it known to her that like you are willing to work through this. Like if there are you know, issues on her end that she has with you, you know, insecurities or stuff like that, and you're willing to work on that with her, um, I would let her know that. If she does know that she does this, um, maybe, I don't know if you can do this, this is just a suggestion, I would maybe try getting classes that your friend is not in. There were a lot of times in high school that I would purposely take classes that my friends were not in, because no offense to my friends, but sometimes they can distract me a lot and I don't get all my work done all the time or I don't pay attention in class as much as I'm supposed to be paying attention. So I will deliberately not take classes with my friends if it's one of those classes that I know I'm going to have struggles with and that I really, really, really need to pay attention in. So I won't take classes with them or even if you are in the same class together, maybe separate yourselves in the classroom and work within different groups if there's group works next question have any of your friendships lasted more than four years yes i have a i think a handful of friendships that have lasted more than four years um i have a couple of friends i think i have three or four friends from middle school we're now in college obviously so that's almost what like nine years something like that um so yes I, I i do have friendships that have lasted more than four years um they're mostly like my childhood friendships from middle school i have one or two friendships that i still have from like elementary school like kindergarten 
um, but we aren't in touch as much as we used to be. Next question. How to stop feeling inferior amongst students of a new school? I, I have already made friends with super kind people, but I can't help having too many self-doubts and being, and being self-critic. Any advice? Um, so I've been the new kid and I put quotations around the new kid because the time that I was a new kid, I was going into high school and the only reason I count myself as a new kid at this point was because the high school that I went to, everybody kind of knew each other except me. I did not know anybody who I went to school with, maybe besides like three or four people whoever I went to middle school with, because the thing was, is my middle school was supposed to go to high school A. Well, instead, I went to high school B, where the other middle school goes to. So I went to high school B, and nobody that I went with went there. So I was completely new to all these people, did not know anybody besides maybe like two or three people, like I said. It is a little terrifying. Being the new kid is kind of fucking terrifying. But the thing is, is... I know high school is that time where everyone's like, oh, you find yourself, like, it's the best four years of your life. I promise you, high school is not going to be the best four years of your life. I mean, it very well could be the best four years of your life. But the thing is, is you're 14 when you go into high school. You still have your whole life ahead. Everybody feels inferior to the other one. We all look at each other as competition, but in reality, you are only compete with yourself and I feel like that is something we have to develop in our brains for a situation like this because I know you're you're doubting yourself so much but you you've got you got to put some faith into yourself like you have got this wake up as you're going into school the next morning and be like you know what today's gonna be a rocking day it's gonna be great I have faith in myself we're confident this is good and I promise you you are not the only one feeling this way there are probably so many kids at your school that probably aren't even new students and they they probably feel inferior to you so I would honestly just say like I said easier said than done just focus on yourself don't worry about what other people are thinking whether someone's better than you or not my camera's also like low-key gonna die so we're gonna blow through these next few questions my best friend keeps leaving me out and never responding and I feel like she hates me I don't know what to do because I love her I feel this I've had this happen to me um, honestly, give her space. Give her space. If she doesn't want to talk to you, doesn't want to invite you out to things, believe her. Don't, be don't ever beg someone to invite you or care about you. If she does actually want to be friends with you, she will eventually reach out. Anyways, those are all the questions that we have for today's video. If you guys enjoyed this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and comment down below if you did. And also if you liked the format of this video as well. Um, I feel like this could be like a fun little like monthly sit down, chit chat, get together. Like we just dish out the gossip, dish, dish out the questions. Like we just get it all out, you know? Feel me? All at the end of the month. Just get it all out, you know? So yeah, if this is something you guys enjoyed and something you want more of on my channel, let me know and I will gladly, gladly do it. But um, yeah, without further, but yeah, I hope you guys all enjoyed this video and I will see you guys all in my next one. Bye guys.